Welcome back to the channel, guys. It is me, AD744. So today, guys, we'll do my Euros reaction to um, the group stage games. We're going to talk about Group C and Group D. We're going to start with Group D since that was the early kickoff games. We'll talk about that first, and then we'll talk about Group C. Group D, man. France is a Poland, guys. I'm going to say this right now, and I have I don't know how many times I have to keep saying this. France cannot play Mbappe as a striker. Mbappe is not a striker. He is a winger. I don't know how many times I have to keep saying this to you guys because it seems like Deschamps hasn't got the memo. And it seems like a lot of people don't get the memo. What makes Mbappe so dangerous is the pace he brings off the nozzle as the amount of pace he has. He isn't that prolific of a goal scorer. He isn't. But because of how PSG is constructed and how you already have Neymar there, you already had Di Maria there, and then obviously Messi, you have to put Mbappe in the team somehow. You couldn't bench him. He's just that talented. So the only vacant position they have was a striker. And that's where Mbappe filled in, and, you know, the rest is history. So that I think for uh, France is that this France team looks so awful. But remember, guys, France typically tends to underperform in the group stage. Typically, France don't do very well in the group stage. Typically, they just get the results they need and generally top the group. However, this time around, they weren't able to top the group because they finished the group with five points, two wins, and I'm sorry, one win and two draws. And now they have a potential clash with the Group E runner-up. And for France in particular, guys, it's quite shocking. Because correct me in the chat, uh, correct me in the comment section below, guys. I believe the last time France didn't top a group in a major competition was the 2012 Euros. I'll have to double check. In fact, let's actually look at that right now. 2012 Euros. Was that the last Euros where France did not top the group? Because I believe since then, in the major tournaments, they have topped the group. I believe they have. So let's go ahead and look at this right here. Group stage. Uh, France right here. France. Yep, that is correct. France, that's the last time France didn't top their group in a major competition. And so let's be real, guys. We all knew France were the heavy favorites coming into this game. We all knew Poland had pretty much nothing to play for because they were essentially eliminated. And France... The, the, everything was on them to play. And what made France, what, what makes France so difficult to gauge is how bad they were attacking was. Because defensively, they've been pretty solid. They only conceded one goal in the group stage, which is actually pretty solid. Them alongside Germany actually have the best defense in the um, Euros, along with Spain, actually. Uh, and the fact that France did so well defensively, I thought was fantastic. You know, Conte was bossing around the midfield. I thought uh, Saliba, Hernandez, Conate were great. Magnon as well. But it's just the attack for France is so underwhelming. Dembele, for me, I'm sorry, he cannot be your attacker. I'm sorry, Dembele, he is a good player, but he doesn't offer you any goals. If you want goals, he just isn't it. And the kind of the same with Barcola. Barcola doesn't bring you any goals. He doesn't have goal scoring in him. And if you look at that France team, it's really only Mbappe that's a real main goal scorer. And I still don't understand why Deschamps hasn't tried, why hasn't given more game time to Giroud. Giroud, for me, is so essential to this team. Because he acts like a decoy, he acts like a false striker, and he can and, and he can and, and he brings so much presence. So I still don't understand why he is why Deschamps isn't using Giroud. I think Giroud is uh, is is criminally needed in this team, and Griezmann as well was benched, which is crazy because although to be fair, Griezmann has been great, but yet for France, as I said, their attack is just so underwhelming because Dembele did win the penalty, you know, Mbappe stopped him score, and then a terrible penalty, terrible giveaway there from Upa Meccano. Uh, you know, QR gives away the penalty, and Lewandowski steps up and he converts. He actually missed the penalty initially, but because uh, Mike Noah was off his line, it was retaken. And yeah, I mean, for France, as I said, man, they had 90 shots, eight on target, uh, very, very poor. And it, it, it's just like Shukri, Shukri, uh, Shukri, hopefully I, butcher, I don't butcher his name. He had a masterclass in goal. He made seven saves. And Poland, as I said, really didn't create that much goal scoring opportunities. They had some good chances, but ultimately we knew France were going to be the com favorites coming into this game. And France, man, they just couldn't convert their chances, man. They couldn't convert. The amount of misses they had was crazy, you know. And yeah, I just think for France in particular, man, they're going to have to improve their finishing if they want to uh, step it up here. For Poland, as I said, man, at least they got a point here in a very difficult group, so you got to give them that. But Poland, for me, man, were simply underwhelming. But like I said, we're not too surprised with Poland. This is what they typically do. And everything so shout out to uh poland for getting a result there and for france man pretty much kind of underwhelming their attack and they got to start Giroud, man now why is like kinsley coman again not giving game time that's crazy to me kinsley coman deserves some game time now next up is netherlands two austria three netherlands man a very poor performance for netherlands which is pretty weird because netherlands typically historically are defensively very good 
that, that that's at least we have seen. But Austria, man, they just played so well off the park. They they outplayed Netherlands, guys. So this could have been a destruction. This could have been. And for Netherlands, as I said, man, they were very, very underwhelming. Uh, they only scored their two shots, two on target, two goals. And yeah, the first goal, man, terrible own goal there from Malin. I don't know what Malin was doing there. Terrible clearance. Uh, then obviously the, the Gakpo equalized uh, before half, uh, right be after halftime. And Gakpo, the thing with Gakpo is that he may not be a good player, but my goodness me, the goals he brings is crazy. And then obviously Sh uh, Schmidt equalizes their fit as a score to make it 2 1. And you think, well, okay, uh, Austria is right back in this, and then obviously Netherlands get the equalizer. Memphis to pie. Weghorst coming off the bench, making an in assist, and Sabitzer scores the 80th minute to uh, make it 3 2. And for Austria, man, they topped the group. They topped the group. Ralph Ragnick ball came in clutch. They topped the group. And for Netherlands, as I said, man, very, very poor defensively. Like, I thought Van Dyke was really poor on the day, which is pretty weird because Van Dyke's usually been very good. I thought the midfield Vermeeren was terrible. Depay, man, I'm sorry. Depay is just, uh, I don't rate Depay that highly. And Depay, as I said, even though he scored a goal in the day, the guy is so wasteful on final third. He is so wasteful. Um, Ake didn't, wasn't that great either. And yeah, just Netherlands, just in general, which is really, really underwhelming. Why is Javi Simmons not starting? Javi Simmons should be starting. He's that quality, in my opinion. Would Wagner that off the bench impact? But yeah, man. For Netherlands, man, why is Delit not starting? Delit, you know? So there's a lot of questions Kuman has to answer here because Delit should be getting game time. I think Dumfries should be getting some game time. Frank Pong as well. And the fact that you're not bringing any of these guys on is kind of crazy to me. And for Austria, man, as I said, what a performance this one. Because, like I said, man-to-man, -man, man to man squad, their squad is completely inferior to France and Netherlands. But what makes them so good is how well they work as a team, especially their midfield. Their midfield is so amazing. My issue with Austria, though, is just the goals. That's my big issue with them because they don't have enough goals in them. But for Austria, man, they're in a great side of the bracket. They're in the easy side of the bracket. And it's good for them. As for Netherlands and France, they're in the tough side of the bracket for the Netherlands. I believe they're going to play against England, uh, most likely. And for France, they're going to be playing against Group E runner-up. And they could potentially get, play against Portugal, Germany, or Spain. So that side of the bracket is looking pretty top-heavy. Uh, let's quickly talk about the other two games. I don't have much thoughts about the other two games, so I'll keep it very brief here. But Denmark, nil, Serbia, nil. This was a very, very underwhelming game, guys. A very terrible game. Honestly, Denmark probably should have won this game. They were the better team. Um, Serbia did come alive, though, in the second half. I thought Serbia actually did play quite a decent second half, but I feel like for Serbia, they just kind of came up too late. Uh, woke up a little too late there. Uh, but yeah, I mean, uh, Serbia, man, they had some great efforts there. Milikovic Savage, their 92nd minute, Vlahovic. But my issue with Serbia is just they were so defensive in this game, which was kind of sad, is that it was almost like, you know what, we're going to go all in now since, you know, there's not enough time left. But it just feels like they kind of w went too late. As for Denmark, they were trying to desperately score. They had some good chances in the first half. But, yeah, I mean, Denmark just is just really, really poor. And for Denmark, man, they they come second in the group because of the fact they got more points as Slovenia in the qualifiers rankings because everything else was tied. And, yeah, Denmark, man, it congrats to them. They got second. And for Serbia, man, if there's any positives, at least they bowed out the tournament in a respectable manner. They only conceded. They only conceded two goals and one goal scored and two points. You know, two points is actually not too shabby. It's a lot better than they have done in the previous tournaments. And I think Serbia should feel proud. And for Denmark, as I said, man, they're going to have to massively improve if they want to make it far in this tournament because their next game is against Germany. And that's going to be a difficult game. Moving next to England and, and nail Slovenia and nail England, man. Oh, my God. England is so bad. Guys, I want to ask you guys this question in the chat. I ask you guys this question in the comments. Which is worse, England or France? Because, my goodness me, both are so terrible. Both are so horrendous. England, man, it's just so uh, underwhelming. Like, you literally start the same exact 11 against that played against both um, that played against both Serbia and Denmark. But the only change you made was Conor Gallagher. Really? It doesn't make any sense to me. Conor Gallagher was just, uh, no. At least he finally gave game time to my new Palmer at Gordon. But why is no game time given to Eze? Why is no ga game time given to Watkins? You know, like, it just doesn't make sense for Southgate, you know? And, like, I just don't understand, like, what is the issue? Because England's just looking so awful, guys. So awful. And you know what the sad thing is? Slovenia actually played better than England in this game. They actually played better than England for large parts of the game. Sure, Slovenia went pretty defensive and everything. But, guys, this is Slovenia, guys. This isn't, like, as an underdog nation, you have to find ways to get results. And Slovenia... They went defensive, and you can't blame them because as a minor nation, it is your, you have to find a way to get results. It doesn't matter how well you play. So any English fans, any English media calling Slovenia out, you guys are just shameless. Have some shame. 
because England should have enough quality to win this game. They had some good chances. Obviously, soccer scored that disallowed goal in the first half. But England, man, they just look toothless, man. Toothless. Like, really, really pathetic. Like, 12 shots, four on target. Very, very poor. And if you look at the shots they had, it wasn't really great chances. Obviously, Stones had that chance there. Um, you know, obviously, um, Stones had the chance of Palmer had a save there. But other than that, there wasn't really any quality, high quality chances from England. Like, Palmer was probably the best chance. Kane also had an early effort there. But yeah, England just looks so bad. And for the amount of attacking talent England had, they look so bad. The one thing I will say for England is that what makes them difficult to beat is that at least defensively, they're pretty solid. So that's going to make England tough to beat. But my goodness me, that attack is going to have to improve significantly if they're going to want to snip the Euros because they cannot do defensive football win the Euros. I don't think they have it in them. But as a sweat in tournament football, it's about getting results. Not about how well you play. It's about getting results. So England, who knows? They might uh, turn up a notch in the knockout stage because England are on the easy side of the bracket. England don't have to. They're going to be playing against the groups. They're going to be playing against... Um, they're in the easy side of the bracket. And England will potentially play against a third-place team in the um, round of 16. So um, let me see if I can show you guys right here in the fixtures. So, like, England's on the pretty, the easy side of the bracket, I believe. So let me just show you guys the bracket real quickly because we do have some matchups confirmed. Um, obviously, I'm not going to say too much about it because, you know, I want to save it for my group stage review. We'll do that tomorrow, of course. Uh, but, yeah, let me just quickly just show you guys the knockout path here. So as you can see right here, guys, England is on the easy side of the bracket. If they win their game, they'll be playing against either Switzerland or Italy. And they should be. They, 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 I think England will be liking their chances. I think England will be liking their chances. But the key thing for England is make sure that they take care of business. So for England, as I said, man, we'll see what they do in the knockout stage. Because that's where the tournament really begins for England. Because we all know England was probably going to top the group. But my goodness me, five points is very, very poor. But like I said, guys, England can still improve as the tournament goes on. Let's not say they can't. So anyways, hope you guys did enjoy this video, guys. Please remember to like and subscribe. And one thing I want to say before we round out, guys. Congratulations to Slovenia for finally advancing to the knockout stage for the first time ever in their history. And they still haven't won a game. It's crazy. Anyways, hope you guys did enjoy. I'll see you guys later. Peace out.